the artifact section. Oh the no! The dumpster fire that transpired in the artifact section of Twitch Wait, what will is go this? down as the funniest turn of events in Twitch history. What the f is that in the thumbnail, dude? Oh my God! The Twitch iceberg. Explain what the f is the hey Twitch there, iceberg. Hey there, I'm Surma. And today, I'm going to present to you the Twitch Iceberg. I couldn't have done this without the help of Ngaku, Nim, and Coaster. Thank you for the help, boys. We have seven levels to go over, so if some topics aren't heavily covered, again, I apologize. I link sources for events and people who I feel like I can't do justice to. Anyways, let's get started. Level 1. Let's check out the Smiler level. I originally didn't have this tier Lovely until I realized guys. the major gap between these and the Norman level in terms of coverage. For example, PogChamp getting removed was the biggest news Twitch has ever gotten. Getting articles written about it on CNN and USA Today, this is for the most part the only global event that Twitch has had. But for the unaware, PogChamp was removed because the face of the haven't been Uh, there were some other Smiler level uh, stories as well guys. in the mainstream media, but I guess there's one other story in the in the Smiler level that uh, I guess they didn't get the to. Emo, Gutex made questionable remarks about the U.S. Capitol rioting. There's a couple, actually. I think the AOC and Ilhan Omar stream got Smiler level. And uh, there was another thing, but I don't know. In turn, causing Twitch to fully remove the emote. And quite recently, replacing with Komodo hype after cycling different faces for around a month or so. Dream SMP. Dream SMP and the resurgence of Minecraft is extremely high on this iceberg for a good reason. During the process of creating this, I had my little brother and other people help gauge the tiers. And every time, every single person knew about Dream and his involvement with making Minecraft extremely popular again. If you're thinking these topics are extremely common knowledge, that's the point. Some of these beginning events really aren't anything too special. Pokemon Go and the start of IRL streaming is what I would say would be the first Norman invasion in quotes. Before Minecraft and before Fortnite, we had Pokemon Go. That summer of 2016 was insane. Streamers getting into all sorts of trouble. In some instances, streamers got jumped and robbed. Summit was swatted while playing. It was a crazy time for Twitch with all these streamers revealing their locations for those degenerates to find them and get them swatted. IRL streaming started around this time too with Pokemon Go and IRL streaming really just going hand in hand as it was the push it needed for the section to finally become popular. Streamers like Jake and Bake, who showed off what Japan's street life was like, thrived during IRL. IRL would see an extreme decline after another incident lower down on this iceberg. Of course, the just chatting section is on here for how big a meme this place has been for years and years. All the streamers poking fun at the ratio between boy and girl streamers and that kind of stuff. Shameless, man. Shameless. Alinity and Pokemane all group together as they're up here solely because of their controversies being covered by those leafy clone channels. With Alinity and the whole cat situation and saying gamer words on stream, you'll find countless videos covering Alinity. And then, of course, the whole Pokemon and Leafy saga that happened in 2020. Him saying that she had a boyfriend, and I'll never forget that this commentary channel made a video about Pokey, and they seriously thought Destiny leaked Pokemon and Toast being together. Was already leaked? Have they gone public with that? Okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie here, folks. Uh, when you look at that clip, it almost looks intentional. I mean, the way he smiles, like his body language, kind of during that whole thing. I think maybe he did this on purpose. Commentary channels injecting themselves into Twitch drama without having any concept of who any of these streamers are, besides the top one percent of streamers, will always be hilarious to me. Ninja's popularity, or his rise to literal superstar status, he rode the Fortnite wave so smartly, and in turn, caused everyone and their mother to know who he was, inspiring every 90 cranking 12 year old that- It's not even crazy. like, Ninja's still probably the most famous Twitch streamer, like, in the normie world. Like, you go to a random part of Alabama, and you're like, do you know any Twitch streamers? They'd be like, no, and they'd be like, do you know Ninja, that guy with the blue hair? They'd be like, oh yeah, I know that guy! that they could be making millions by just no cam streaming on their PlayStation 4. He really forged a different mindset in the younger Twitch viewers, with those kids streaming solely for donations and subs. Level 2. Onto the what face or Norman level. Here, you'll see your average Twitch viewer. They just started watching in 2019 to 2020. Ass. Thinking about it now, it's just really crazy to think how much Twitch as a platform has grown. If I were to make this list in 2017, half of the stuff on level 3 and 4 will be knocked up to 2 and 1. But the influx of users has made this list very- yeah, I don't know any of this shit, except for Sweet Anita Stalker. I feel like this is an extremely- like, this is- this is like still- like, I wouldn't say Bedmeister is like normie tier. Very, very Look different. Dr. Disrespect's ban. Of course, first on a level, we have Dr. Disrespect getting banned. Still, 
to this day, there hasn't been a definitive reason as to why he just sort of was just erased off of Twitch in a matter of hours. His eerie last stream is very unsettling to watch with it abruptly ending and then his account being banned the following day. He seems to be doing fine though on YouTube. Maybe one day we'll find out what the doc did for such an extreme ban. Ninja and Shroud moving to Mixer. Ninja and Shroud moving to Mixer was very out of the blue, especially Shroud's. But this is the first time streamers were bought over to stream on separate platforms. Sure, streamers- It's literally not even true. There were competitive platforms that even like Justin TV or even Twitch back in the day, right? I guess it was the first time like one of the biggest ones. ...have contracts for platforms- Yeah, there was- someone said it already. What the f was that, dude? Uh, what? Oh my god, that scared the f Bro, are you serious? Yo. Are you serious? Can you hear me? Wait, you can't even hear me. Yo, if you hear me, I'm just saying hi. Hope you have a good day, man. Oh my god. That scared the sh shit out of me. I can't hear you. Please talk about the guy who got shot at the top of the hour <laughs> ad break. It was such a- Did you hear me? Yes. Oh, have a, have a good day with the news. Sorry if I interrupted the news. I was just testing uh, Steam. I'm a Steam streamer now. I got sponsored, so. <laughs> hey, shut up. See you, man. Wow, 42 minutes. What the f That was terrifying. ...forms that they were already streaming on, but this was almost like sports, when teams were drafting players and just throwing millions at these streamers to stream on their site. Luckily for Ninja and Shroud, though, Mixer would fully shut down, and they would get to move back to Twitch, keeping their millions. Ninja versus Twitch. Ninja vs Twitch was a little incident that happened during all of that. When Ninja left Twitch, they unverified his account and started recommending different Twitch streamers to watch on his page. Bro, honestly, that was kind of... Twitch does... Twitch do be a, you know, spicy ex-girlfriend. They do act like, uh, you know... Q-messy. They do act in a, in a pretty shady way when, when streamers leave the platform. And somehow, some way, a stream was the first stream that was recommended and when ninja found out he wasn't quite happy leading to this twitter video there was a account that was number one being recommended on my channel one year and i have my no say in any of this worse. stuff i can feel so my brain this is, like, this is the line changing. this is the straw all i can think about I'm trying to get the whole channel taken down Help to begin me. with the purple screen of death the most recent event on this tier is the can you imagine if he had his channel taken down like what the then what? What are you going to do? Not have a channel? Purple screen of death. Twitch's new way to deter people from game. using any sort of ad blockers, but in turn, caused internal issues with tournament websites and whatnot. And even if you disable your ad blocker completely, it will still pop up. The only workaround is to fully uninstall your ad blockers and install Twitch ad block as an extension. Yeah. Thanks also, that screen, reminds asshole. me, it's top of the hour every hour and it's time for a 60 second ad break. Obviously, don't do what this video is suggesting, uh, you know, but uh, there is a way around those ads that I run at the top of the hour. Once every hour, by the way, suck my c to everyone that was watching Austin's show earlier. That's what a normal channel does. A normal channel pumps you with three, three, three minute ads of an hour. Okay. That's what all the other channels are doing. Okay. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, bitches. That's right. You could do that for five dollars. You do that for free <coughs> with a Twitch Prime. Okay. Excuse these are like I five to six minutes at least per hour. I use my Prime on them because of that. Yeah. I don't make money. Uh, I don't make money off the ads anyway, or I do, but like it's nothing in comparison to my primary revenue, which is subscriptions. That's it. Thank you, Tommy Mama, for the five gifted subs, dude. Here's the one minute ad break now. See, there's always, there's always a dude. There's always one in the chat. Let me out. Practically nothing says a rich white dude. Wait, hold on. I want to ban him. Uh, what was his name? What was his username? Four month smile. Yeah, let's fucking ban his bitch ass. Now you can't subscribe, dumbass. Now you can't subscribe. You can't chat. So next month, you're when you're still in here, you're gonna have to. See those little 60 second outbreaks at the top of the hour. I was thinking about this. Like I've and literally eliminated more. more than 5,000 at the very least up to like 10,000 people, uh, from, from ever even subscribing to me. Loki, you should have never made a contract. Sorry for the shitters. No, why wouldn't I? Of course I'm going to make a contract. That's so stupid. Obviously, I, I want to be able to stream as a partner streamer on the platform. Adblock said on Twitter that they're working on a fix. So hopefully this whole mess can be over with sooner than later. Twitch like, you guys remember the adpocalypse, dude? If I don't do a contract, that's what you get. You get ass clapped with however many ads that Twitch wants to run on here. Auto, auto running, okay? The contract is so that I uh, play less ads. Twitch DMCA mess. I can't wait, dude. You know what? Fuck, it just, it just shit pisses me off so much, dude. 
Next time I have a contract, I'm doing 40 minutes of ads an hour. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. DMCA jokes on Twitch have been a thing for a little bit now. You banned a six-month sub my first day on your stream. You had like 7K subs, wild ride since then. Yeah, I don't give a... But they really only picked up in 2020 when DMCA takedowns became actually serious. Rumors of streamers being banned live for playing music on stream that wasn't copyright free. Streamers having to create DMCA free playlists. This ding dong US senator actually wanted to make it a felony for playing copyrighted music on stream. Yeah. And a buddy of mine, Masayoshi, was given a strike for playing clown music and Twitch flagged the song as a Lil Uzi song. Twitch themselves were even caught having to mute a song and play no copyright music over the background so they wouldn't get banned. And this all happened live. <laughs> FFZ and BTTV. Franker's Face Z and Better TTV are here because as a Twitch viewer, at this point, I feel like you should somewhat be knowledgeable of the extensions, even if you only have the six slots that Better TTV gives you. Emote culture has become much more popular than it was a few years ago. I've met chatters who use emotes like they've been chatting for years and years, but they only recently found out about Twitch in 2018 or even later. Fedmeister. The first weird controversy on this iceberg, Fedmeister. With him being kicked from offline TV for just being so creepy and weird off stream and at night with the girl streamers in the house who live there, so telling people him and Pokey were dating and whatnot, just some extremely odd things. Then he accidentally leaked texts and logs between him and Pokey with defense and counterpoints that Destiny actually read all on stream. But since then, we haven't heard much from Fed. LSF. Live stream fails. Yeah, hey, that was a fun little saga, huh? It was a real fun saga there. The infamous subreddit that circle jerks the same group of streamers. The idea of the subreddit itself is awesome, just sharing popular streamer clips and just random fails or whatnot, but this subreddit can get extremely toxic and flat out ridiculous at times, from relentlessly digging into streamers like Alinity day in and day out, and it literally took a streamer to pass away for people to take a step back and reevaluate the purpose of this subreddit. When LSF is normal, it's quite yeah, enjoyable. They were like, yeah, we shouldn't do that against Alinity and Pokemon. Instead, let's just do that against Hassan Hasanabi Piker. Every drama finds his way back to fuck my ass every time. Rebel subreddit to browse. It's just unfortunate. All it takes is one drama clip to light the fire under all these users, turning this subreddit into an absolute shit show. Level three. Here at level three, we're looking at the average Twitch watcher. They probably came in late 2017 ish and just casually browse LSF and Twitch. Ten They've heard names and such from level four, but really haven't looked into night. it. Dr. Disrespect's apology and TwitchCon incident. It's quite interesting that I was able to place this all the way down at level 3. But again, Twitch is so different from what it was a few years back. If you don't know what happened- That's not me, that's the, uh, that's the Twitch mod Hassan who got clapped. Dr. Disrespect got- This person doesn't watch me. There, I, I most likely will not appear on this entire video. That's the thing about like, um, people who analyze Twitch or talk about Twitch streamers. Like, Twitch is still incredibly insular. So if a content creator just simply does not watch started. one of the Twitch streamers, like I will most likely not be on this uh, at all. Gotten a little but then again, I don't want to be had to apologize live to his whole audience in 2017. This video came out before your blow up. What? It's on. It's like a couple months, months ago, man. It's March. I had already broken like numerous streaming records uh, at that point. Mm. He then rebranded and changed from the Slick Daddy Club to the Champions Club, following his return stream in early 2018. Since then, the doc has been a consistent Twitch meme, with the Forsen community creating Forsen CD, being the go-to emote for whenever someone is alluding to or are blatantly this dude, this dude probably is like an OG Twitch watcher. Cheating at something. Doc has played into the joke a few times, asking Shroud what it means. Mine's just D. Shroud D. But what are the other ones Twitch stand for? And poking fun at chatters. <laughs> <laughs> all in all, it's just harmless fun. Hopefully Doc doesn't take it too personal. Minor note, Doc would also be temporarily banned in 2019 due to filming inside a public restroom at E3. This would also Big instantly be clipped and emotes were created as well. Albert. Uh. Staying on topic of entanglements. Next, we have Albert, who in 2019 was exposed to be having inappropriate relations with a fellow streamer while he was already dating Lily Pichu. How did they find out, you ask? The streamer who he was talking to, Avocado Peeled, leaked their this DMs on stream. Seven ads in a row no, to not sell. through texts, not even through Twitter DMs, but they were communicating through Google Docs. This unfortunate- <laughs> That was so stupid. 
That was so funny, dude. Yeah, I remember this. A series of events all unfolded while offline TV was doing their big Japan IRL trip, where they all went to explore Japan and share it with the viewers. This news would break mid-trip, and Albert would eventually leave back to the States and go on an indefinite break from Twitch. Toast with the 500 IQ maneuver spotted it from the beginning. Albert means overall. Albert and sometimes oh, he true. brings people that like, shouldn't really be here. Albert has since returned to streaming in October of 2020, but that whole mess was so crazy to watch unfold live. The deer. The deer is another recent event. When Twitch announced their safety council, one member on the board seemed to take it a little too far. Ferociously stiff. She sort of had a little power trip in the streams following the announcement of her involvement with the Twitch Safety Council. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. I have power. They can't take it away from me. There's also a section of her stream where she explained that she identified as a deerkin, spawning a slew of new memes on top of the already recent ones of her power trip. The situation really fizzled into nothingness. She's still on the Safety Council and not much has been talked about since then. I'm quite sure a lot of people forgot about this event completely. I was about to say, what Bobby happened? I thought I thought the, the deer was gonna Twitch. ban everybody. This guy is a communist and his stream is whack, bitch. What's up, Soda? Yo, Soda, what are you up to, bro? Nick's not around. Come to LA. Come stay with me. Pull up, bitch. You won't. You won't pull up. You won't pull up to Los Angeles, dude. Check Soda's stream. What is he doing? Oh, he's just like, what is he Great talking shit on everyone's stream? Friends in Final Fantasy can't even win. Oh, he's just talking shit in people's streams. Game, mo fucker. Oh, no. Twitch plays Pokemon. Twitch plays Pokemon is a story of good, a story of evil, victory and defeat. A whole entire story and universe was created from this Twitch stream. You could probably make Thanks a whole iceberg just on Twitch plays Pokemon alone. The complete history of Twitch plays Pokemon by Schwam Games really dives deep and accounts for each day. But in 2014, the account went live and allowed users to play Pokemon Red through chat just by typing up, down, A and B to move the character all around. It got extremely hectic and highlighted how hive-minded and chaotic Twitch chatters actually are. One moment that caught my attention was when it took them a whole 13 hours to cross a portion of the map because there was a ledge running along the whole bottom part of the path and chatters would just make the character jump over, causing everyone to have to restart. Then the person behind the account introduced Anarchy and Democracy Mode. Anarchy Mode was just how the stream normally ran, with all the inputs and chat being accounted for. And Democracy Mode, having chat place a vote on set inputs, and the war between Anarchy and Democracy players began. Getting the characters stuck in the spinning maze area for hours on end, and- Anarchist Malding. I can't wait for Anarchist to mold and be like, Ah! Actually! Ah! Anarchy is when you have democracy. Anarchy technically, anarchism is when you have a democratic. So democracy mode is technically anarchy mode. Shut the fuck up, you piece of shit. <laughs> Anarchist, send uh, Noam Chomsky an email about this. As the chatter also uh, joked about nice the joke. Trip, my brother. Uh, Noam Chomsky, sir. They're making fun of anarchists on the host and not be broadcast. Do you think this is ethical or moral? And then when they finally completed it, chat voted for Anarchy Mode and threw themselves back into the maze. You really had to be there to experience it in its prime. It was really a once in a lifetime event for Twitch. And I'm sure everyone who was a part of it will remember it for a very long time. Twitch music. Twitch music is a staple for anyone who really wants to get the true twitch.television experience. From old Hearthstone streamer cancer music like Alex the Seal or Radio Kappa by Nims, there are so many different communities who all create music for their streamers for chat to enjoy, like Coaster, Sortyway, and Howie, who create hilarious Twitch songs for viewers to enjoy, or Ngaku and Constera, who make beautiful music videos and visuals. Twitch music has evolved so much since its conception, and the fact that it's still alive and kicking today is a great sight to see. The only genre of Twitch-related music that has seen an unfortunate decline is Gachi-related songs. Maybe one day we'll see a resurgence. Billy Harrington and Van Sama. Billy Harrington and Van Sama are the faces of Gachi and Gachi songs. With Van actually streaming on Twitch, and being extremely accepting to his status as a Twitch meme. Billy Harrington was also very accepting of the Twitch community, but unfortunately, he would pass away in 2018 due to a fatal car accident. TryHard7 Entertainment has a great informative video documenting Billy's rise to stardom in the adult film industry and then on Twitch. Billy's face is behind some of the most- TryHard7 Entertainment. That's the name of the- Most used Twitch emotes on the platform, and it's a big part of Twitch history as a whole. All to counts. I'll keep this one brief so I don't leak anything, because I ain't no snitch. 
but just know that your favorite streamer most likely has an alt account that they stream on. They're always more laid back, and the streams are super chill compared from their main ones. For Connor, on February I do not have one. 21st, 2021, logs leaked from streamer For Connor, who's affiliated with Mizkif and that whole crew, as he stayed in Mizkif's streamer house. The logs were extremely racist and homophobic, prompting Mizkif to remove Connor from the house that same day the logs were leaked. In a last ditch effort, Connor went live to apologize and tell his viewers that's not the person he is, but the logs said other. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bro. Wise was some only being from late 2020. Not much has come from this, with Connor yet to make a return. It might be quite a while before we hear something, but this is just a case of someone being a weirdo and people let it slide for way too long until there was definitely some beef and someone anonymously unloaded all these logs to expose him. Viewbotting. Viewbotting is a term that you don't really hear that often anymore. It was extremely popular back. Yeah, because he got legalized, like fextralized. Okay, that's it in the early days of twitch so streamers get that extra didn't you stream with them did i like on the raw show or some shit maybe did i stream with uh connor 13 months celebratory gesture it was among us oh it was i did stream with them Extra boost of discovery my favorite incident of view botting and i'm sure a lot of people forgot about this but rice gum was actually caught view botting back in 2014 and it's just a funny clip of him realizing he leaked the dashboard. Then he commented on the video that exposed him a year later with this corny little response. Another very popular case was the one of Masson. Detective Rectful was on the case and exposed Masson live for view botting by comparing their revenue share for the month Casual of October. And with Masson having around triple of Rectful's viewers, account. his revenue should be exponentially higher. Well, when it came to it, Rectful and Masson ended up having around the exact same revenue for the month of October, coming around to about 2.5 to 2.6k for that month. While Rectful Oh my god, 2.5 was around a 5k channel, and Masson was peaking and averaging around 15k plus on some streams. This practice has died out besides legal view bots, which Devin Nash, our CEO Andy, explained as these bigger streamers have access to these popular websites like wiki see the games that they stream or whatnot, and their stream is embedded into a one pixel area at 1% volume, and they get people who have no clue. I have no idea who the thon is. This is before my time. They are watching their stream because they're just browsing a website for other reasons. And these big streamers swap in and out like shifts for their little legal view bot. So it has started the Among Us formula. Believe it or not, true. the sex doll having millionaire is the go-to for new Twitch metas. It's true. And this was all but the same. In July 2020, Soda booted up Among Us, and the rest- Wait, I was on this game, by the way. I played with him on the first history. ever game he played. He was taught how to play by friend and Twitch staff Pluto, and they ran practice games for five hours, teaching streamers like Poke, Hassan, XQC, and the likes. This was the definitive start to the Among Us meta. Thanks, Soda. Okay, he mentioned it. I'm just saying. Let's start with the only non-controversial item on the list. Everland. Everland is a huge open world MMORPG that was created by Rekful. And then I never played again. It had full emote integration and the in-game chat was meant to be a hangout space for every Twitch community, featuring different structures and monuments in the likeness of other streamers. Unfortunately, following Rekful's passing, there haven't been any updates on whether the game will get a full release. Let's hope that someday we'll get a release and enjoy the world he created for the chatters and streamers to enjoy. Sweet Anita's Wait, what happened to his voice? Is the rest of this just like... Stalker situation is one that is really concerning and Wait, highlights... What is going on? ...how twisted some viewers can actually get. This stalker would stand outside of her house, peek through her mailbox, and follow her in several places in public to the point where she had to get strangers to restrain the stalker in public. She received many, many death threats from this stalker with extremely unsettling and graphic messages. The good news about all of this is that around mid-2020, Anita Stalker was arrested after months and months of being an absolute creep. Stalker situations are always so unnerving. The thought of someone watching your every move with you having zero idea is really rattling to me. Bay Jerry's got exposed by XQC in June of 2020, when a few clips of him surfaced explaining that some of the top streamers get paid to run charity streams. Dr. Lupo wasn't too happy to see this all happen, but after a quick exchange on Twitter, their issue was resolved. The problem occurred when Jessica Blevins, Ninja's wife, Oh, this! I was like, what the f- 
That wasn't that big of a deal. Inserted herself in the thread out of- That wasn't even an expose. It's only an expose if, I guess, like, you don't know about it. Nowhere. But, I mean, I guess they I didn't started a really back and forth Twitter thread either. that was hilarious to watch unfold. Jabs from XQC calling her Gucci bag Blevins, and Ninja himself even getting involved. This all happened extremely early in the morning, at least in North America, so it was ridiculous to wake up and see Twitter losing their shit over all of this. Trainwreck TV even made his own separate tweet explaining how he was approached by some companies about a sponsored charity stream. His response was calling it ratty and shameless in the true Trainwreck fashion. Keeping on the topic of money, let's go into Phantom Lord and that scuffed ass $10 headset he had throughout his streaming career. Phantom Lord blew up during the CSGO gambling craze by doing the most insane bets or dropping thousands on gambling pots, getting huge returns. Come to find out that this scumbag was the owner of CSGO Shuffle, the website that he'd gambled on, and not only that, he would be playing with house money. He would DM the developer of the site and ask for win percentages so he can make it out big. It's Richard Lewis! Dude, I've become a I've become a part of like old Twitch lore at this point so much so that like most of you have no idea that I debated this man about Donald Trump in 2018. Okay? It's on my YouTube. Like I literally that's how that's how old Twitch lore this is for the stream. Phantom Lord was exposed. I think he still has a I don't know. I mean, he, he, we're chill now. He's like he's like definitely leveled out, okay? But uh I think he used to have like a he used to have like a folder with like, uh, you know, Oppo research. In 2016 by Richard Lewis, who made an 18 minute video highlighting all of the incriminating logs between Phantom Lord and other CSGO gambling website owners and developers. The cherry on top was when Phantom Lord was permabanned from Twitch. He didn't take it with his head down and start his 9 to 5 at McDonald's, nah. Hospital. The dude decided to file a whole ass lawsuit against Twitch, saying they breached his contract when they banned him. The lawsuit situation appeared in October of 2020, so we are still waiting to see what happens to our scamming buddy Phantom Lord. Let's stay on the topic of CSGO for a second to highlight one of the funniest moments a streamer was caught cheating live. This point. I actually had to go back and watch the clip again to remember her name because everyone just says Clara anytime this clip is mentioned. But streamer Miss Q Gemini was playing a competitive game in CSGO when all of a sudden she leaked a menu of the hacked client she was using. At the time, she was using her client to perform walling, and when she realized that she'd leaked it, she asked her chat if they got the bug where they can see people's ranks and the enemy team through walls. Just watch the clip. You, you can... What? No! That's fucking hilarious, dude! Did you guys ever get that, uh, that weird glitch in CSGO where this shows your rank? That it shows everyone's rank? Because my Oops. game... I, I played the other day. After realizing she was screwed, her last resort was to play dumb and lose it on her friend Clara, who she accused of installing the client on her PC. She exits the game and just repeats Clara over and over and over again. This clip blew up in the CS community with all the top streamers watching and giving their input. Like, getting caught cheating is GG's, right? But getting caught cheating back then as a female gamer? Ooh! Ooh, dude, you know, you know that shit is like, it's basically like a, like a perfect, I mean, perfect situation it's like a perfect storm the closer you are to like you know 20 2016 like people don't understand this platform literally still has a lot of issues most of the internet still has a lot of issues but dude it was like 2016 like around that time it was it was still popping off for women on the internet okay like so much worse dude like literally worse than it is now. If you think, if you as a woman on the internet right now are like, oh my God, I hate being on the internet. Like it's so terrible. And it's, and it certainly is. Okay. It certainly is. Don't, don't mistake this. I'm not saying it's actually really good, but my Lord, dude, it was just straight up unsafe. Okay. People will just openly be like, you're a woman. Get back to the kitchen every time to it. And now it's time to get into the edgy stuff. Let's start off by covering the CX Network, a large collective of streamers and leeches all under the infamous streamer Paul Danino, otherwise known. If any bozo loses Hassan's point to the Clara girl and other Twitch streamers feel an intense pressure that their mistake will represent all female streamers for some reason, oh yeah. As Ice Poseidon. The idea of having a collective of streamers works out great if you moderate what your members are doing on stream, but for the CX Network, half of their streams were doing otherworldly shit and tiptoeing the line of terms of service on Twitch and YouTube. I don't even know if I can show this to be honest. I feel like every single person that is like literally involved in this part is 
straight up like banned permanently forever some banned by the american government in the form of jail you know what i mean like it's like except for <laughs> pepela m yeah except for some <laughs> Except for the guy, I think the cameraman's doing well. <laughs> yeah. Creating streams like UFCX where they just fought each other in some dude's backyard or doing their scuffed Stanford prison experiment stream, totally disregarding the mental health of their contestants. There's also the character of Hampton Brandon, who appeared on ISIS streams either to cause drama or in some cases fight people or ICE himself. The most memorable clip of Hampton Brandon was when he was starting shit with someone on a sidewalk in LA, but decided to chicken out and run into the street, which caused him to get hit by an oncoming car <laughs> driving by. The downfall of- What the fuck? I can't show any of this, but he just straight up gets hit by a car, dude. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. What the fuck? <laughs> He literally is just like trying to fight this dude and the dude runs after him with a fucking bar stool He runs into the street and a car just BAM <laughs> That's so stupid. What an idiot Oh my god <laughs> Okay he, fucking, began he gets air dude and when ICE was swatted and the FBI showed up to his streamer house and confiscated every PC and all of their streaming equipment, ICE then made a statement video that he would be distancing himself from the CX network and lifestyle for a bit, and his viewers were not too happy about that at all. Oh no. On the topic of CX, let's break down Andy's. This originally spawned from Andy Milonakis appearing on ICE's stream, causing any stream sniper or person involved with ICE for the most part to be called an Andy or have Andy associated with their name. For example, Mexican- That's how- that's how important, uh, ICE Poseidon, despite the fact that he's, like, permabanned and... Kind of for, like, you know, it definitely deserved, okay? Uh, but he was, he was like such a fucking pioneer that people still say Andy. Like I use Andy. Mexican Andy, Asian Andy, Burger Andy, otherwise known as Burger Planet, etc. The term Andy would then be evolved even further in Twitch speak by calling anything or anyone something does an Andy. The most popular term is React Andy, for when someone just reacts to videos the entire stream. But there are others very similar, like poking fun at a streamer's view count, calling them a 2K Andy. Wrapping up our ICE coverage for this level at least, let's take a look at his final permanent ban from Twitch and what caused it. When he was doing a regular IRL stream, he made the mistake of leaking his airport gate slash ticket to his audience live, saying quote, I'm not sure telling you guys that is a good idea, but what could you possibly do? And of course, with his very considerate and wholesome community at the time, ICE was swatted on his own plane within the following hours. This caused massive news media coverage and a PR nightmare for Twitch. Paul Danino's account on Twitch would be permanently banned shortly after this incident. This would also be where you could mark the downfall of IRL streaming. The decline happened quite rapidly, and nowadays it's almost a rare sight for a streamer to do an IRL stream, especially in the last year due to coronavirus. On June 27th of 2020, ICE made an open letter to Twitch, explaining that he is very aware of the community that he had fostered on Twitch and asked for a second chance from the staff, explaining that he is a much different person now than he was back in early 2017, and to his credit, he has sincerely reformed on YouTube. No statement from Twitch has come from this video apology, and there seems to be no indication that there will be one. It seems that our boy Paul Danino may be sitting with Doc for a bit over on YouTube, unless we hear otherwise. Now onto the topic of SWAT. I don't think, I do not think Twitch will unban him ever. Especially because like, dude, listen, the only thing I knew about Ice Poseidon, I mean, I knew a bunch about Ice Poseidon after I joined the platform. I didn't know anything about him beforehand, but like, one of the things I, one of the things I did know was that he did like a, I think he did like a porn stream. Like he would just straight up have porn stars and like make them use like dildos and stuff on Pornhub, on Chatterbait. Yeah. Like in a weird way, he was in a weird way. He was literally like, he was like the Howard Stern of live streaming. Swatting itself. Swatting is defined as the action or practice of making a prank call to emergency services. It was a robot controlled by chat. Yeah, he was, in a weird way, he was like Howard Stern, but he took it way too far. In an attempt to bring about the dispatch of a large number of armed police officers to a particular address. 
you would think that there would be a decline of swatting incidents following Ice Poseidon's ban, as well as the multiple incidents in which people have died as a result, however they still do unfortunately occur. Oh yeah. The most recent incident of swatting at the time of this recording happened in February of 2021, involving Greek God X and Soda Poppin. Both were streaming at the time, and were pulled away from their streams to deal with the unfortunate situation. Another known case of swatting was when XQC was mid-game in Overwatch, and you see him just throw his hands up in the air and leave the room. You can even catch his teammates beginning to worry after he's AFK for a little while. We also have a very recent swatting involving Tifu around December of 2020. The cops can be heard yelling and asking him to come out with his hands up. And the last one we'll highlight is involving nothing. The CSGO pro who was a part of Cloud9 for quite a while was swatted mid-game as well, and the cops came into his room with guns drawn. All of these situations are completely messed up, and I'm glad to say that there's been an extreme decline in swattings occurring in the Twitch community. No one in the live streaming community wants to see this happen. It puts people at risk of being- I wouldn't say a decline, I would just say that, you know, People are better about it. Seriously injured or even killed. Now, Allison Quinn is a name you probably haven't heard in a long, long time. But this guy was considered one of the funniest people to watch on Twitch around 2016, according to Surma. His whole act was ridiculous, giving himself insane haircuts or dancing like an absolute maniac on what stream. What is this? Allison Quinn was a character that is a once in a lifetime type of occurrence. Someone like Allison Quinn would not be able to thrive in the landscape of Twitch now due to his reliance on inappropriate donations and just being a breeding ground for toxic chatters. The streams themselves were no issue. It was just that Allison never really had an actual community. His clips would get a lot of attention, and then the next day a collective of many different communities showed up to mess with him. Of course, it was always problematic chatters or people banned from other communities, so of course all of that negativity in one stream would not fly on Twitch nowadays. We haven't heard much from Allison Quinn, with his last upload being on March 9th, 2019, and it was a song he made called Musically Star. And that's all from me. I'll hand it back over to Surma. Level five. Here at level five. I'm scared, dude. I'm scared because I feel like it's already hyper degen. There's like more levels to it. Oh God, I don't even want to. This is like, this is really, really f***ed up at this point. Marked with the five head emote. These are some topics that maybe the average LSF browsing Twitch watcher is unaware of. Starting off, let's take a look at RS, Glory, and Gold. This whole story is just a prime example of a classic witch hunt. Back in 2016, there was an article released about a sex offender I mean, I know about who slept stuff, with yeah. an underage girl whom he married in RuneScape, and RS Glory and Gold loosely resembled the dude in the article, and that was enough for grown adult Keemstar to have his two brain cells fire, and he made a drama alert full on ripping this old man apart. On top of that, there's clips of Keemstar in full denial after everyone realized he was so horribly wrong, asking his shatters how they know he was wrong. He watched the dude live break down and cry, and instead of instantly apologizing, his first thought was after RS Glory and Gold said he was getting a social security check, was to call him poor, and then only after that, he began to apologize. We'll get it soon. I'm paying this dude a thousand dollars. See, I would have sat here for the next yeah, 10 years. Like dude, he's uh, poor. Yeah, I'm not but not before Keemstar could flex that he is donating him a G. Instead of dealing with the situation in a private manner, which God knows Keemstar could never do, he made it public to attempt to deflect the shitstorm that was about to hit him. The US Army streaming. Ah! A more popular event on this list thanks to- Jordan Yule did this! It's a slasher. But the US Army was streaming on Twitch and being very sly with their tactics, using fake giveaways to point users who clicked on their buttons to be brought to the US Army recruitment page. Twitch actually stepped in and made them remove the giveaway buttons after they found out what they actually linked to. They were also full on censoring and muting chatters who were asking them about US war crimes and just <laughs> trolling in chat. The deception- yeah, This community did not touch on this issue at all. We were- we would never- we would never play a role in- in that. The deception was just really weird, and the fact that they knew what they were doing is really unsettling. Using Twitch to recruit extremely young and impressionable children is not the best look. Over 150 different career fields that you are able to enlist for right out of high school with very, very little experience. Justin TV. The fact that I put Justin TV so low on here is crazy. But yes, Justin TV is what Twitch was originally, founded by Justin Khan on March 9th, 2007. It was the website that actually Justin only streamed on solely for himself to document his daily life while being live. 
By the summer of that year, there were many more channels to watch, around 60 or so, and then by June 2011, they totally separated their gaming section to a new website, and that was how Twitch was born. In a short three years after, Twitch would be bought out by Amazon, and we would see the dissolvement of Justin TV in turn. I wonder if Justin realized what big impact he had on the internet as a whole. It just must be so surreal for him to think about it sometimes. The Wreckful Japan Stalker The Wreckful Japan Stalker moment was an extremely unsettling turn of events caught live on stream. When Wreckful was walking around in Japan at night, he noticed a very weird person just lurking at the end of a crosswalk, and even pointed it out to his chat. Come on, guys. Continuing to walk, he noticed the person was following him down the street and was actually gaining on him. What so Wreckful made a sharp fuck? 180 turn and made a joke that it would be so creepy if the dude turned around. And not even five seconds later, you see the guy fully turn around. And that was when Wreckful decided to sprint out of this area. Turns out, it was just a very, very awkward viewer who didn't know how to introduce himself. It actually took Wreckful running away for the dude to call him out, and then they finally met and introduced themselves. The Angel of Shibuya. The Angel of Shibuya is the story of Josh- Oh my god, dude. I got goosebumps. Dude, that is- Chat, take notes on what not to do, man. That's like the average Twitch chatter, I swear to god. Average Hasanabi viewer? No, you mother- lurk whenever i go into a store i know exactly who the hasanabi head at the store is okay you want to know how because you're just mysteriously and suspiciously you know tinkering around with shit right in my uh, field of vision okay until you get the courage to come up and shakingly be like oh my god i'm actually a huge fan okay that's how i know and then we take a photo and you're literally full body contorting while we're taking the photo and then you run away all happy straight up also don't do that the the other the stalking one Josh Decino, the face of kappa his journeys in japan and all the acts of kindness he did while in japan he would go live and frequently be caught helping people get out of bad situations or helping lost kids find their parents but more often than not he would be seen helping all the drunk people who either passed out on the sidewalk or having trouble walking to get where they needed to go. The artifact section. Oh the no. The dumpster fire that transpired in the artifact section of Twitch Wait, what the will is go this? down as the funniest turn of events in Twitch history. What the f is that announced in the thumbnail, dude? Oh my god. Seeing their dead on release game artifact, the section on Twitch never even had any sort of viewership at all. Until Nim was linked to the artifact section and saw this. This was the beginning of the chaos that would ensue. At first, it was only people baiting Nim to click the streams until more and more streamers and viewers found out about this. Then people were straight up just streaming movies and whole entire TV series. And also, it went so absolutely out of hand that when Twitch stepped in, they made it so you had to have two-factor authenticated accounts to stream on the section, but this didn't stop anyone at all. All this chaos ensued until the section was fully removed. In the end, Twitch attempted to sue about 100 people involved, but since that, nothing has really come from it, at least from what the general public is aware of. Bless RNG being removed. Bless RNG being removed is an event that I completely forgot about, but I'll keep it brief. The emote Bless RNG was permanently removed because the streamer behind the emote admitted to actually abusing his ex-girlfriend. He dropped a long response admitting and arguing that his ex-girlfriend was abusive as well. Just a whole fucked up situation. Hassan. When talking about Hassan, I am not talking about the bean-sized head streamer. This Hassan was Twitch staff. Why? What the fuck? I have a normal sized head, dude. Why am I catching strays on... That's crazy. And if you were even on Twitch for a little bit back in the day, you remember all the memes about this dude, as he was in charge of giving out partnerships to streamers. All the girl streamers would send him nudes and whatnot, and of course, the screenshot of his following list that showed his whole list was just filled with a bunch of low viewer count girl streamers that he most likely preyed on in hindsight. And if you talk back to him about it, you would get banned, and people deemed it the Hassan Chop. But it actually turns out that the memes were all true, and multiple women came forward talking about their experience with Hassan and how very weird he was. He was then fired from Twitch, and we haven't heard much from Hassan in a quite a while. Level 6 down at level 6, we have forgotten controversies, or events that many people are not aware of whatsoever. Zillian OP. Starting off, let's talk about Zillian OP. Oh, is the that the guy who can who walk? Is that the guy who can walk? Being wheelchair bound. 
This happened Bro, in- Oh, it's a miracle! 2013, and the famous clip of him getting out of his wheelchair and walking away sparked major talk in the Twitch community, saying he faked all this for donations and money, and that he was deceiving his fans. With no update, Zillian went ghost for years and years, until April 2020, when a new account, It's Bluish, appeared on Twitch, and a user posted it to LSF, and almost instantly the account was taken down for ban evasion. Fast forward to now, there was a great video by Wavy Web Surf, where they actually got in contact and interviewed Zillian, and it turns out he wasn't wheelchair bound for life, and it was only due to an injury from a car accident. And we see Zillian admit the route he took for everything was so very irresponsible. Zillian called it cancel culture before cancel culture was a thing in the interview. I highly recommend you check it out as it sheds- Wait, what? Wait, I didn't know the second part of this. Wait, 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 wait. So that dude actually no. needed a wheelchair? So he actually needed a wheelchair, but then no. he just kept it? He just kept it for like years and made it seem like he didn't need a wheelchair? Or he made it seem like he still needed a wheelchair when he didn't? Is that what it is? Light on his yeah. whole situation. Global Emote Origins. Global Emote Origins are something that really no one has much of a clue about, besides the big ones like Trihex being Trihard, and of course Gutex being the former Pog champ and whatnot. But what about Global Emotes like People's Champ, which features Smash player Bobby Scar? It seems as if most of these Global Emotes are Twitch staff who threw a little nod to themselves in the chat room. But one curious case is the one of Brain Slug, which was originally streamer Buena's face, but it was swapped to this alien. This was, I believe, the first case of an emote getting the axe for being controversial. But it wasn't actually Twitch's doing. It was the face behind the emote himself, Buena. And the emote had been victim to racist chatters overtaking it and spamming it everywhere. He decided to fully remove his face from the emote, which is 100% understandable. The long history of Twitch global emotes is massive. If you just Google any global emote, you'll be brought on a whole entire journey from article to article, learning about why this person has the emote on Twitch. If you're bored, I highly recommend you browse them one day. I buy power throw. The I buy power throw was at the time one of the biggest scandals in gaming history. Back in 2014, <laughs> what happened was I buy power was playing against netcode guides, and you could also bet on the game on this website called CS:GO Lounge. The odds of I buy power winning were so high that if netcode guides won the game, the return would be over tenfold. So what the players of I buy power did was dump thousands of dollars worth of skins into the website to bet against uh, themselves uh, to lose. And then oh, NFTs, dude. The OG NFTs, boys. And they threw their game against netcode guides. And they actually sort of kind of got away with it if it weren't for their constant denial if anyone accused them of throwing. This, in turn, striked an investigation and got four out of the five players from I buy power banned for good. Nowadays, a lot of them play Valorant, so I suppose they're doing good for themselves. That incident was one of the first match-fixing events caught live on Twitch. Now, for Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. The shit show that ensued when this game what was being this? streamed by big streamers was absolutely disgusting. In-game, you played as a monkey some odd million years ago. But instead of just being a normal chat, the chat began to spam Kamon bruh and Hyper bruh in response to the streamer playing- Not sure why I'm still subbed. For the record, that's how Twitch was when I, when I first got on the platform. That's just like, that was the norm. People were mad at me for banning uh, Kamambra and Trihex in the game. I remember vividly, this was when Soto removed the emote from his chat room permanently and XQC disabled it for the stream okay. because chat was being so extremely racist. Just a classic example of edgy Twitch chat going too far as they always end up doing. Level 7. The last three down here on level 7 are something else. Each of them hitting different corners of why streaming can get really bad really fast. IP2. Let's start out with Ice Poseidon 2. After Ice Poseidon subreddit was purged, this second sister subreddit was started by his viewers. And I'm not even going to call them fans because these were some of the people who were involved with his swattings. But this subreddit was just a cesspool of racism, toxicity. I We should just skip that part. Uh, we're just going to skip that part. No need. It's literally completely irrelevant. Boosts from skilled players. He would okay. then act such the as SN League part. and StarCraft. Many suspect he was buying account boosts from skilled players. He would then actually get an in-game item in League after community challenge from Riot happened, and he got Athene's Holy Grail inside of League of Legends. After that, there was a huge controversy involving him with his charity streams, as many people assumed he was stealing money from his charity pool behind the scenes. And it just gets better, honestly. After that, Athene went out and purchased a large building and wanted viewers to come live with him. Viewers and streamers got very cult-like vibes from these actions. And then, in 2017, the dude made a whole- This is one of those things where I, like, don't understand. Like, is he a memer? 
Or is he literally a cult? Like, is he a cult leader or is he a memer? Murat, did you understand? Because it feels like an actual cult. This place always helps my dark times. And there were people that were like in this chat. There were there were people in this chat even. Like there was another Twitch streamer I remember that literally was like defending him regularly. I mean, the, the his haircut does actually scream cult vibes. Whole cryptocurrency and attempted to scam his viewers into buying it. After he got caught, he told his viewers that, of course, it was a scam, and that was how his whole character was, and it was a part of the show. Now, apparently since then, in 2020, he's making a mobile app that has to idiot. do with streamers of some sort. I can't really do justice on this topic as I would like to, because of just how absolutely insane the whole string of events were. But there's a documentary video by People Make Games that is quite long, but it details everything that happened since the beginning with the theme. The Creature. And now, what is time that? for The Creature. Soda Poppin's horribly obsessive fan that wanted to move in and live with him. It what started when one day Soda got a knock at the door and this kid explained he drove 17 hours to meet him and they let him in for the day. After they went what? out to eat, they let the creature spend the night as driving in the dead of night for 17 hours obviously is not the best idea. But the problem occurred when the kid never left. The next morning he was still there and seemed to just be living at Soda's house. It got even weirder when he tried to force Soda to take his ADHD pills and smoke weed with him. The creature told Soda he sort of had to force him to take these drugs and- Thank you Ramscake313. Everything just went south from there. The kid started plugging his whole setup into the house and it took Soda's friend Sam to fully kick the creature out. But before he could leave, the creature told Soda he left something for him. So NMP and Nexius had to scour the house in search of what he left. Turns out it was just pills and weed, but it got even weirder when three VODs were uploaded from the creature's old Twitch account. And in the third video, he was showing off all the footage he took inside their house. Just walking up and down the stairs, going into rooms and filming. Absolutely creepo shit. This whole story is just a prime example of how bad a parasocial relationship can really get. And with that, this concludes the Twitch iceberg. I would love to continue updating the list, so please, please comment down below if there's anything that needs to be added. And again, I want to thank Ngaku, Nim, and Coaster for helping with the list. And of course, for Rora for voicing level 4. I hope you all enjoy, and I hope you all stay safe. Thanks for watching. I don't want to be horny anymore. I just want to be happy. Oh, it's true. I do feel that way. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>